All right, you hear about this. UCLA is giving out internships to illegal immigrants. The 10-week paid summer program will be open to undocumented students regardless of their legal status. The focus of the program, social justice and health care access. Let's bring in our first guest today, Sterling Beard, news editor of Campus Reform. It's good to have you with us, Sterling. Tell us where this idea originated. Well, the idea originated several years ago. The, uh, actually, the Dream Resource Center is the uh, portion of UCLA's campus that is uh, conducting all of these internships. It's part of the school's labor center. And uh, they've actually given out, according to the Daily Bruin, UCLA's paper, over 400 of these internships so far, both to uh, immig uh, immigrants who were uh, brought into the United States illegally at a young age, as well as uh, those who the center labels allies, those who are willing to advocate on their behalf. So it's actually been going on for uh, several years at this point. Now, if you read what's out there, it seems like U.S. students are having a hard time finding jobs. These are students who actually are documented and immigrated correctly here to the United States legally. Uh, so why help out the undocumented ones? Well, that is a, uh, a very good question, as a matter of fact. There, it seems that uh, there has been a large push now for a while in order to aid undocumented students or illegal immigrant students, if you prefer, uh, across the country. As a matter of fact, there are multiple states now, uh, not just California, who uh, offer in-state tuition to undocumented students, and that includes Texas as well as New York. So it's not uh, a question of, you know, just in this one specific area, why are uh, illegal immigrants being helped out? This is the sort of thing that has been going on for a long while now and at a bunch of different uh, campuses. Now, if you talk to those who support a more liberal immigration policy, uh, they will say that these students, these highly educated students, are leaving the country, and that's going to cause an economic drain here in the United States. And according to a recent published or paper published in Newsweek, it found that immigrants, especially college-educated ones, are returning home in greater numbers. And new research shows they are returning to enjoy a better quality of life in their own countries, better career prospects, and they enjoy the comforts of being closer to home. So again, why is UCLA doing this, trying to keep these college-educated immigrants here in the U.S.? Well, the argument is that it is the, uh, the moral thing to do, that it is the uh, kind and passionate thing to do, the idea being that these uh, students were brought into the United States not of their own free will, but were brought here by their parents, and they sort of uh, face a tough decision because it would be very difficult and, uh, for them to return to a country that they only have very vague memories of. But the fact of the matter is, is that when it comes to uh, caring for these students at UCLA, the internships don't even appear to be focused around giving them job skills or technical skills that would be useful even if they returned. They are focused on uh, social justice activism, including immigration activism and health care access. And depending on one's views of those things, uh, that can be a morally righteous action, but it would hardly prepare them for the job market. Well, that's true, and that's a good point. It does seem to be put more politically motivated. In fact, the National Review says there is no mystery about why Democrats are enforcing immigration laws. This might tie into what we're talking about here. Quote, you start to suspect that the liberal elite in San Francisco and elsewhere are not interested only in cheap nannies and gardeners. For them, pulling in more illegal aliens is perhaps first and foremost about pumping up their political power. The article goes on to say that California has flipped from a red to blue state after adopting an open borders policy. Part and parcel what we're seeing here? Uh, I don't know if you can quite tie it to part and parcel of what we're seeing here. Nobody, certainly nobody has come out and said, so far as I know, yes, our goal is to uh, boost the Democratic Party through illegal immigration. But what you're seeing now is, like I said, it's not even just uh, blue states. Like I said, this, uh, this was passed in Texas back in the early 2000s, in-state tuition for uh, students who were brought to the United States illegally as young children. And so part of that moral argument that they come back to is, it wasn't their choice, we should do what we can to help them while we're here. As a matter of fact, this is the sort of thing we see all the time at the Leadership Institute's campus reform. For example, uh, earlier this year, uh, Rutgers University in New Jersey actually hosted a, uh, a uh, sort of college application fair for these students called undocu Rutgers, uh, where they were told that they could uh, learn to fill out a college application and that their information would not be turned over to the federal government. Well, and again, a lot of these universities, maybe not Rutgers, I'm not familiar if it's a private or public university, but a lot of them do, see, do receive federal funding. Uh, so it might be concerning for taxpayers who know their tax dollars are going to educated people who uh, maybe, even if it's through no fault of their own, are not here in this country 100 percent legally. Well, their tax dollars are likely already going to pay for them, considering that uh, K through 12 education in the country is publicly funded. These are people who have already had publicly funded education. The question I, is, I think that might be a little bit different topic, Sterling, but we can have a discussion about that as well uh, on a later date. Good to see you, and we'll have you back real soon. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, Sterling Beard from Campus 
reform joining us today. Also coming up next, is Russia expecting something from the Iranian deal? And will they get it? Correspondent Todd Wood joining us next. 